When I was a little girl, my father, who was in the Merchant Marine, as a teenager, he almost drowned. And someone who happened to have been a very excellent swimmer just plucked him out and gave him lessons free of charge until he was working out enough to make the Stuyvesant High School swim team in New York City. And he went on to also go to CCNY and make the team there. My professional background began very, very early on at Seward Park High School as a lifeguard and instructor. And that continued going to the um, Bronx Community College pool, which is the old NYU campus uh, facility. Uh, I became an instructor when I began, and um, that lasted 25 years. I went on to NYU to get my master's in, in education as well as uh, organization administration of higher education. And then I continued at Columbia for my doctorate where it was a very, very, very new field, but very, very interesting because people from all walks of life, there were police, firefighters, law enforcement, which I am now and have been at John Jay College for 30 years. So it's been, a, it's been a long haul and a lot of changes. During that entire time, I wrote 16 books on swimming. The first one was Swimming for Total Fitness, uh, which has uh, been uh, 400 pages, which is everything you wanted to know and, and more, uh, hopefully, for people who have either had a bad experience or none and wanted to swim for safety. And that's been my very, very uh, important goal in my entire professional life. The beginning was very, very early on where there was the park department pools in the Lower East Side. One was called Hamilton Fish or Pitt Street Pool. One was the Baruch Baths as well. That was an indoor pool. And I did meet Bernard Baruch uh, at the pool. Um, I was probably seven or eight years old at the time. That's when my entire family and my father started teaching much earlier here, volunteering for 65 years, because a lot of adults couldn't swim. And it's not only for children. And if they don't swim as children, they probably won't swim as adults and miss the good benefits that water has. He'd always say, pass it forward. And that is why I learned to swim and learned to teach swimming, basically from my father and from many, many other people who were uh, in the field at the time. And that's what started and continued until today because every day is a new swim day. Every day has an opportunity to tell the story and it's never too late. You're never too old. It's never, well, I can't. Well, let's try. And, and all the uh, excuses and reasons why people just pass and it's one thing that you can do at all ages. I still swim competitively and began swimming at the Hamilton Fish Pit Street Pool with the newspapers that um, endorsed these events and one of them was the Journal American and the Parks Department City of New York which I started my first job. I was the first, at, first aid attendant at that facility. Professionally the most important thing that I really wanted to do was synchronized swimming. And in, at CCNY, um, a woman from Hungary was a new hire there. She taught me synchronized swimming at a much higher level than I did because we always did some shows and whatnot at the uh, Ham Hamilton Fish Pool. Um, and it helped to elevate my skills so that in 1964, I was selected to be a member of the United States performance tour team that went and participated in Tokyo, Japan. And so I stopped uh, competing after I was 18 because that was the age when age group swimming, which was then called AAU, Amateur Athletic Union of the United States. And there was nothing and I thought, well, why, why can't there be? Why shouldn't there be? And then just before I was 30, and I had started teaching at uh, Bronx Community College. Shortly thereafter, 
and I was uh, able to start doing what's called Master Swimming, USMS, United States Master Swimming. And I continue to do synchronized swimming and master swimming at a national and international level, uh, you know, in the 20s. And um, uh, swam 17 synchronized swimming personal solo championships uh, during that time. A lot of the aspirations were to write the book and my first book was Swimming for Total Fitness. It has been out for almost, almost uh, 40 years. It's, uh, and I took 10 years to write it because it was during the time when um, the Olympics in 1980 were um, not taking place. And so people who were very good land athletes changed their sport and one of them was swimming because they may have gotten hurt or they just had the opportunity because they couldn't participate in what they love to do. The question uh, that's really important is when a student really likes swimming, how do they get better? How do they make the uh, elite team and whatever elite means in their particular area? I would always start with the beginning, not only timing someone to race two laps, which is often in a pool of 25 yards, how fast do they go? And there might be a cutoff, which is what happens now. But your stroke and your mechanics of your stroke, your breathing, your body position, you need to leave time for rest. Very, very important because you get tired when you swim. You need to eat properly and of course to drink H2O. That is the key. Everybody should learn to swim. And you can start at a young age. I have had the, the, the opportunity for students telling me that they finally learned to swim because they had a bad experience or no experience at all. But passing it on, just like my father did because he nearly drowned, coming full circle, that is why I have continued to do God's work my whole life. This is, for me, the most recent and the nicest medal that I have ever, ever seen. This is from Mesa Kelt in Arizona, and this is from the 1650. It is a one-mile swim. But this is really beautiful, and I love to paint. And this is something that um, when my um, late husband um, passed away. He was a, an anesthesiologist. It was really, really hard to, um, to continue. And everyone, whatever it might be, might have a disappointment, hopefully not a loss as I did early on. And what do you do? You have to continue. Swimming helped me a lot. So, you know, it's never too late to do that. And it's always nice to meet new, new swim buddies and just like the people that are in the uh, forces protecting our freedom, they would have your buddy have your back, got your back. They would become a swim buddy in our Wets for Vets program and then we, they would be a study buddy. And then looking forward, they'd become a life buddy. I, I met Dr. Katz in the early 90s, um, I was a swimmer. She came into the college uh, I was attending at the time, was Borough Manhattan Community College. Uh, and she taught a, a water safety instructor course. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was fortunate enough to be able to take that course and I started my career in, in teaching. You know, they are directly responsible for me being where I am. And I'm totally grateful to Dr. Katz for that. Swimming, it's the great exiler of life. BYOB, bring your own bathing suit. I always have a suit in my head. And if I don't have it, I go back and get it. And you never know when you'll have that opportunity to swim when you're not sure uh, when you might you know, have that chance. And if not, I'll go buy another one. <laughs>